The French-Canadian film, Jesus of Montreal, follows a young actor named Daniel who is commissioned to put on a passion play in a large church. As Daniel begins to recruit other actors to rehearse and then to put on the play, the scenes of his life begin to mirror the scenes of Jesus' life in the Gospels. There is a scene which mirrors what we hear in today's Gospel of Jesus clearing out the temple. And in it, Daniel goes to an audition to, find, to, to recruit a young actress named Mirelle. But there he encounters a really uh, nasty kind of uh, uh, casting director who is demeaning and degrading the actors and actresses. And he makes the, he's making the women to take off their clothes, so in his words, so the client can see what they're paying for. And as Morel begins to very uncomfortably obey and begin to strip off, Daniel walks into the middle of the stage and looks at her and says, don't do this. You don't need to do this. You're better than this. And as Morel begins to feel all you see on her face, she feels more at peace. She begins to put her clothes back on. The director kind of begins to argue with Daniel and pushes back. And in the end says, you know, sit down and stop making a scene. And Daniel says, you want to see a scene? Watch this. And then he goes and kicks over the camera and then the other camera and begins to throw over the tables with the monitors and recording equipment. It's a really powerful scene and it's really easy to cheer Daniel on because we can see what is at stake. That the dignity of a human person is being violated and demeaned. And we love that Daniel pushes back against that. But what about in the gospel we hear today? What exactly is Jesus doing when he goes in the temple and, and makes a whip to drive out the animal sellers and the money changers? We might think at first the way Jesus acts says that they're not meant to be there. They're doing something wrong in terms of the temple. But in fact, they were there supporting the temple system. Because this is not just a synagogue where people might go to pray even today in a Jewish synagogue as we would come to a church to pray. Now this was the, the temple of Jerusalem where the central act was the sacrifice of animals. And because people didn't carry around their sheep and their, and, their, and their cows and their pigeons, they bought them there in the forecourt or the foyer of the temple. And because people were usually paid with the Roman currency denarius, but were only allowed to use the, the Jewish currency of the shekel in the temple, the money changers were there to help facilitate that transaction. So the money changers and the animal sellers were doing what was necessary to keep the temple system going. But this is actually what Jesus is responding to. And when Jesus says, my father's house should be a house of prayer, is he talking about just the temple, the building, or something much more? There are many times in the Old Testament where the word house is used to refer to something other than just a building. It refers to the nation of Israel. The term house of Israel is a common phrase used to describe the people. At other times, God says to one of the kings, Jeru, I will make you a house, meaning I will make you into a great nation and a great leader. And so, and so when Jesus speaks of, of my father's house should be a house of prayer, he's not just talking about this building. He's talking about the whole Jewish religious system. And it's this which Jesus is basically protesting against for two reasons, I think. And one is it's because it keeps God at arm's distance. God is someone whom you only can come to in the temple. You have to come at special times. And it's transactional. You have to buy something, do something to get God's favor. Uh, um, animals were sacrificed for the atonement of sin or to ask God particular things. And so it became very much a transactional, non-relational system. Whereas, of course, everything Jesus did was about inviting us into a direct, immediate, personal relationship with the God whom he called his loving Father. He invited us to call God our Father in the wonderful prayer that he taught us. And everything Jesus did was around bringing us closer to, not further away from God. So this is what Jesus, I believe, was, was protesting against. Not that not the temple was doing the wrong thing for the temple, it was doing the wrong thing for God, keeping people, keeping people too far away. And we, I think, and we know this is what Jesus is actually saying, because of what he says next. When people, the Jews say, what sign can you do to show us what, why you've done this? He says, I will tear down this sanctuary and rebuild it in three days. And we know in hindsight, he was talking about himself, his own body and his own life that his body was the sanctuary which would, be, which would be torn down, killed on the cross, but he would rise again in three days. Jesus is saying, he's foreshadowing, that his sacrifice would replace all other sacrifices. Jesus' sacrifice because of who he is, God, the Son of God, is enough to, is enough to replace 
every sacrifice ever needed. No more sacrifice will be needed again. And the, and the letter to the Hebrews in the New Testament explains this in greater detail for us. So Jesus doesn't need us to go to a temple and offer sacrifices ever again. No, we can have that personal relationship with God that Jesus invites us to have with him and through him. Unfortunately, it seems to be something that we as humans keep on falling into. We tend to keep on pushing God away and, and making our religion a bit transactional. The Protestant Reformation was really around the fact that this had happened yet again, where the system had emerged people had to pay to have masses offered to release souls from purgatory. Same problem, different millennia. And of course, um, of course, we've moved a long way since then, thank goodness. But we know now that, our, that the sacrifice of the Mass is the sacrifice of Jesus, not our own sacrifice. But it's something which, which helps to bring us close and into relation with God. It's not meant to keep us away from God in any way, shape or form. So we can indeed cheer on Jesus as we hear him doing this seemingly violent, angry act in the temple because he has every right to do so. He is the one who is inviting us and every person to come be in love with and be loved by God. No barriers, no transactions, just a personal relationship with a God whom we can call a loving Father. That is what our Lent should be about.